Today I'm joined by Marcus Carver to discuss the start of the new season. Now he's settling in at the club. Hi mate, how are you? Yeah, not bad yourself, Pam. Yeah, I'm good, thank you. So yeah, how good. things going so far? You've been at the club for a few months now. Everything going well? Yeah, uh, I'm enjoying my time uh, so far at the club. Obviously, I've been, been made very welcome. Obviously, it's, it's helped that obviously uh, a couple of players are already known to me. Obviously, the likes of Jack Sampson, Adam Hansen, Dean Winard. And obviously, Charlie's come along with me uh, from Chorley. And uh, yeah, the lads have just been great. I've fitted in pretty well so far, I think. What attracted you to Southport? Like, what, what had you heard about the club before you joined? Uh, well, I, I heard quite a bit, obviously. Like I say, I knew a couple of lads that were already there. Obviously, I'd seen the, the form before Christmas of last season. And uh, obviously, it looked like, obviously, Liam had got together, himself together, a team that was obviously pushing to obviously wanting to go up and uh, yeah that's a, another thing I want to to achieve before obviously I finish football another promotion say hello to your cat so what's your exactly, cat exactly yeah I apologise for that every time he just loves uh, people speaking on the phone he'll always jump up it's probably happened another few times before the end of the conversation what's his name Arlo <laughs> In the backside. <laughs> so when you joined the club, like, did you feel like you could bring something else to it? And like, was you excited to like offer another striking option? Yeah, um, obviously, as as a striker, you always want to credit yourself on scoring goals. Obviously, in my career, probably not scored as many as I'd like, but I'd, I'd bring to the table more than just goals. Obviously, my work rate, um, my team ethic. Obviously, I've. I've created so many chances for previous clubs and still managed to finish <laughs> to finish uh, with the top goal scorer at other clubs but no uh, the main thing for me is to come in and obviously help the other strikers out whether that's with goals assists or just with a bit of experience in the league that we're in well throughout pre-season you managed to score eight goals it was a bit of a strange pre-season because it was like so long like it was unexpectedly long but you're just pleased to like be out there performing and like bagging those goals just to like boost your confidence as you arrived. Definitely, yeah. Obviously, like I say, everyone everyone's judging strikers on goals and I think three or four out of the the front five or six that we've got all managed to get eight or nine goals throughout the pre season, which is obviously puts us in good stead for the the season ahead. Obviously, we drew first game nil nil in the league, which obviously it's like, oh well we have we dried up of goals. But no, we're still creating chances, and uh, like I say, it's just the it, the the preseason, just playing them games. Obviously, just just getting the goals. I, I, I think we've scored about 40, 45 goals throughout the whole of preseason, and I think was it a, a quarter of a season that we actually played throughout preseason? I think the, the twelve games. I think it equivalent to a quarter of a season, doesn't it? So, but no, uh, the lads. Obviously, did well throughout pre-season. I think we, we, I think we won nine games in the end. And at the end of the day, um, the winning mentality is only going to boost us and our confidence for the, for the season. Of course, like pre-season was a test for everything. It was a test of like getting used to the new system on the pitch, getting used to like new players like yourself arriving. It was also like getting used to like fans not being there or cases like we had a pre-season game against Huddersfield cancelled because of COVID, which has then happened second game in the league so this is about adapting to sort of like the new way of life as well yeah definitely obviously it's just so unpredictable at the moment uh, obviously no one knows what's going to happen obviously is the game going to go ahead this week is something going to happen obviously all, all we can do as a team is prepare right and obviously take take every week and every game as it comes but like I said the pre-seasons set us in good stead playing all them games keeping ourselves fit uh, I'd like to say we're probably one of the fittest teams in the league because we probably have the, one of the longest pre-seasons that I know of to other clubs. So, of course, the season got underway a few weeks ago in the FA Cup against Morpeth. So, are you pleased to be back out there? Yeah. Uh, well, I, I was extremely happy, obviously, having a long pre-season anyway because I don't think I've played since probably middle of February anyway when I was, was at Chorley. Uh, obviously due to an injury and a little bit of a fallout with the manager but um, obviously 
the long pre-season was good, then obviously to, to finally get the, the season started, and especially to get off with a win. Obviously, I know it was a bit of a, a scrappy game throughout, obviously only coming off two one winners, but obviously respect to Morpeth, they, they give it a good go. And, uh, but we showed the great determination and fight to obviously come back from a, a losing position. Do you think like you're a team who can show like, a lot of fights this year? Like obviously you're going into the next game back of a defeat. But well, you think you've got the like the team spirit and the character to keep fighting back and that confidence? Yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh well obviously <laughs> for coming up against Charlie, obviously man uh Charlie's former team, even Jack Sampson and Adam Hansen used to play for the club as well, uh going back. Uh, so obviously there'll be a lot, lot of people. Yeah, there'll be a lot of people wanting to prove a point. So there's a bit of extra fight there from obviously four individuals there. But but no, as a team, I think uh, we're not a team that's going to lie down and die. Obviously, I think we're always going to go want to push ourselves. All the lads want the same thing. They don't want to be fighting for relegation or just happy to finish mid table. Uh, we've all got an aim to try and finish as high as we can. Uh, playoffs, obviously, at a minimum for us. I think at the best of times. Uh, with the squad that we've got, I don't see why we can't be pushing for the playoffs. So, of course, you mentioned we're coming up against your old side, Charlie, this weekend. So, of course, you you spent obviously you came through at Accrington and you entered a number of loan moves, and one of those loan moves was at Charlie. But then you joined the club on a permanent basis. So, what 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 made that the right club for you to go back to? Uh, following the loan spell, uh, it was Matt Janssen at the time. Um, he was just one of the managers. Obviously, I weren't happy when I, I left playing full time football. Obviously, I just come, I just had a, an injury that put me out for I think four or five months, and uh, it was it was one then. Matt Janssen put his arm around me and was like, "Oh, you, you." I think I was twenty twenty three at the time. I think and he was like, "You need to be playing games now. You can't be sitting on the bench going on loans." It's like come to here. It's local to where you live. Obviously, we'll, we'll look after you give you game time, you'll be our main man. And basically, just just said that everything right. And it was just everything I wanted to hear at that, at that time. And like I say, I signed it. And then I think four, four and a half years, I, I ended up spending there. Do you think your time at the club sort of developed you as a player and a person after like being like a young kid at like Accrington to then going to like men's, foot, men's football and playing regular? Yes, definitely. Well, nothing, nothing beats men's football uh, and nothing beats being in a team that's around you. At the end of the day, you can, you can be a young lad going out on loan, gaining experience, which is great, but there's nothing like having a team that you're settled in to help you, like give yourself, give yourself a kick up backside to help you feel better about yourself. Um, at the end of the day, like I say, I think I played over 200 games for the club and that only that's only given me more experience for now to obviously bring to Southport. And one of those experiences were you were part of a team that got promoted a few seasons back with Charlie. So how are you going to use that mentality of like knowing what it takes to get up to the National League and bring it like to the table for the port? Yeah, well, obviously got getting promoted obviously a great achievement, especially for the a club like like Charlie at the time, uh, obviously they were always punching above the weight with a budget. They were never really one to be paying massive amount of money, and it was just all about uh, the team spirit. And obviously Southport have got that, and obviously with me and Charlie coming in, we're hoping to obviously get, give that bit of experience and help boost it a little bit more and help push them finally over the line again. What are your memories from going up? Was it a nice big celebration that night? Well, it was uh, one that I really can't remember. Uh, like I say, uh, to be fair, my partner was, was pregnant at the time, so I had to be on best behaviour, but uh, still got managed to get in about two or three o'clock in the morning. So <laughs> that's the only thing I remember because I got told for the next week, oh, you're going to be doing this, you're going to be doing that, because uh, I wasn't home to look after <laughs> Was it was the celebrations in the end worth a week in the doghouse? Yeah, definitely. Like I said, the, the, the memories made at the end of the day. Uh, obviously, sometimes it only happen once in your career. Fortunately, I've had I've had it twice because uh, I was up, when I was on loan at Barrow, we got promoted from uh, the National League North as well. Uh, they, we won the league, 
I, had, uh, I think it was, they were, I were only there for two months in my second spell and they got promoted there. So we, I had one time there and obviously one time at Chorley you now. So you mentioned obviously team spirit. How big is that in a league where there are sort of some teams like who've got a bigger budget than others? How important is it that you're all, all together? And can, can that mean more than money sometimes? Definitely. Uh, well, as, as you said, uh, obviously, Ch Chorley proved that. Uh, didn't have a massive budget, uh, but the team spirit, the togetherness, everyone willing to fight for each other and everyone and the camaraderie, it was just great. And like I say, sometimes that can just push you over the line. And especially when there's no fans to give you that extra boost, you need someone behind you suffering. For example, the likes of Morgs giving you, go on, you can do it, you can do it. Just pushing you, then obviously everyone in it together. And like I say, sometimes it, it's a bit rough. If there's ever a scrap on the pitch, you know your mates have got your back. And it's just, just that little bit of fight from your team and trusting in your team always pushes you over the line towards the end. So of course, you mentioned like not having the fans there to shout, to like cheer you on. So is it bigger than ever now this season with everything that's going on and like having to sort of be unified and, like, and just work towards the same goal probably harder than you normally would? Yeah, definitely. Well, as I just mentioned then, uh, obviously, your fans normally, get, they always say that you're thir uh, 12, 13, man, whatever you want to call it. They're always there, they're pushing you. And sometimes they can be, some fans are overcritical and they can be booing you and it sometimes makes you drop your level. So it, it kind of, it's kind of a stalemate, kind of evens itself out. But you know then, obviously, you've got to push yourself. And obviously, with the games being streamed, there's nothing missed, is there really? Like, <laughs> you could be having a, a stinker and obviously fans don't see it, but obviously on the camera and they're watching it, they can see it. But no, I think everyone, everyone setting our team at the moment, they're all looking for the same goal and we're all fighting for each other. Uh, like I say, I've, I've not seen a bust up yet once where other clubs have seen bust ups, but no, I'm, I'm, I'm happy what I've come into. And obviously, we're all going for the same goal and hopefully we can get a win this weekend and hopefully start a run. How important will it be sort of like to get our first win under your belts in the league? Definitely. Um, at the end of the day, it's gonna, it, it will start a run. Uh, I, I believe in our team and what we've got. And I think if we can get that first win under our belts, obviously Saturday, um, an away game as well, it'll be four points on the board out of two games. They do say two points a game wins you the league. So obviously it would be two points from both games and that's on target for us and at the end of the day that's what our aim is it feels sweet to get the win over your old club as well and we, are you sort of playing your score against them will you be celebrating or will you just be respectful <laughs> see I, i'll probably have to find myself for this because i've just come in as the fine master at the club but i I'm, I'm a respectful person uh i do have respect for the club i do hold Charlie very highly obviously whatever happened in the past has happened but obviously there's a lot of people not i'm not saying people there but the fans that i do have a lot of respect for i've got a lot of friends that are obviously fans as well from the club so i will hold back emotions and uh, probably won't celebrate but i'd love to get a goal against them and obviously get the three points because obviously the main thing now is southport and that's what i aim to do and obviously aim to try and achieve big things with the club of course just finally you've already mentioned like you aim you're on the playoffs this season like, is everything sort of in place for the team to achieve that? We're sort of like a manager in Liam, who's been there and done it before, players like yourself who know the feeling of promotion. Do you think you have the right balance of everything? Yeah, I think I think we've got a, quite a bit of experience as well in the team. And like you say, it, Dean Winard probably doesn't get enough mentions, but obviously he's helping out on the coaching staff. He'll, he'll put his boots on, he'll be on the pitch when he can. He's helping the young defenders uh, learn the trade. Obviously, he's got a lot of experience himself. And obviously, all over the park, we've got, I think, uh, probably the average age is about 20, 24, 25, which is a great age to have with, obviously, the experience heads in helping the likes of, for example, Connor, Connor Woods. A great bit of talent, same, same as now. Great talent. And obviously, if we can pass on a bit of experience to them to help them out, it's only going to benefit the club. And at the end of the day, I feel that we've got enough in the club to obviously push for our goal. Well, mate, just to finish today, we want to do a quick quiz. So you might have seen that during the week, 
we posted a few FIFA cards on the Instagram, and people had to guess which player they were based on those stats. So I'm going to read out a few stats to you and see if you can guess who these people are. No problems. So the first one, his overall rating was 61. His pace was 74. He had 47 dribbling and 43 passing. Hmm. I'm going to go with Dean Winard. Oh, correct. Spot on. Was it? Yeah. I was going to say, is any like defending stats on there? That was my next question. No, I, I've, never seen, like, I've never seen Dean in a race or anything, but 74 pace. Is he, is he that fast? Is he a fast centre-back? That, that, that must have been FIFA 12 or something. <laughs> no, uh, to be fair, I, I was at Aki with Dean and uh, he was a quick lad then. I've not, I've not seen him move too much recently, but, uh, but no, he, I know once upon a time he did have quite a bit of pace behind him. I saw that and I thought it should be like, it's like a Joe Gomez position. Like, I, never, I never had Dean exactly. down, like the speedy centre-back. Exactly. Be a good signing if we had him then. <laughs> So uh, the next player, this person, not not as fast as Dean, but I don't think I don't think anyone is in the squad. According to <laughs> but, uh, we had, so this player got sixty two pace, uh, yeah. sixty two physical, and, and forty six passing. And he's one of the more more recent players who've been on FIFA. If that helps you out. Um, I think he's been in the league. Early, like just recently, uh, it won't be now because I'm guessing now's pace is a bit quicker than that on the game. I'm gonna have to go with Jack Sampson. Incorrect, I'm afraid. Uh, oh. I'm gonna give you his position, see if that can help you at all. Well, he's a centre back, centre back. Who plays for us? I can't think. <laughs> Moore's not been on FIFA. It's Charlie Oliver. It's not. It is Jack Bain. What club was that? That's Fleet. Sunderland. Sunderland, yeah. Uh, I'd say he's quicker than that. Has he, has he been? Has he been harshly done though? Yeah, I've seen. I've seen a couple of videos recently on there. Uh, on uh, Facebook of uh, obviously the guy going into clubs and I don't think the stats are right at all for a few people. They just guess. Especially lower league, I think they just guess. Because right. I remember when, when I was at Aki, they never came in and did any like tests to try and work out what pace you were or anything like that. It's just a guessing game. We'll do a couple more to see whether yep. see whether got these ones a bit more accurate. Uh, <laughs> so this player had 68 pace. 54 shooting and 51 dribbling. Re repeat that one again. Uh, 68 pace, 54 yeah. shooting and 51 dribbling. I'm going to say me. That's correct. I'll see. <laughs> see That's harshly go. done as well. <laughs> So, so is that one of the examples of them coming in and not, not really examining yeah, that Yeah, definitely. Definitely. If I'm a 68 pace and Dino's 72, something's wrong. <laughs> and uh, this FIFA, the card I found, you were 53 overall. A bit harsh for you? Or do you think a bit, or uh, uh, when you was young, is that fair? Or would you say... Yeah. To be fair, I think that was probably my, one of my first ever cards, you know. I think that's around FIFA 13, FIFA 14, I think that. I think my best card was a 56 overall in the end. My brother used to collect them, you see. So I used to get told. Well, when I was young, I used to, I still do it now. I always, I always do like low league career mode. So I always like pick a team and try and get them yeah. up like, the championship or something. So like you, Samo, you know, I knew, I knew of you all before you joined the club. I thought, oh, I had him at Accrington when I, when I was, when I was 12. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think, I think my potential on the game was, Unbelievable. I think I was, I was supposed to reach about a 78 or something overall, but obviously it didn't happen. <laughs> still got a bit of time, still got a bit of time to... Yeah, do a body. Go a bit later on. <laughs> right, we'll do one final player. So this player, 
70 pace, uh, 41 passing, and only 29 shooting. Ooh. 70 pace. 29 shooting, so he's got to be a defender. Oh. Doily. Correct. Are you pleased with a... Cubs, you were what pace were you? You were sixty-eight. Doily two ahead of you. Dean, Dean four ahead of four ahead of Doily. Do you think something's right or wrong? I know we said you know I said Dean was fast. Do you think something something's a bit wrong here? Yeah, some, something's gone wrong there. It's been a, it's been an issue there. I'm not having that. All right, Doily, Doily's quick when he gets going. We'll have to we'll have to we'll have to uh, have you all in a race. We'll have to line you all up and see see yeah. see if Beefy was right. To be fair, I could tell, probably tell you top three now anyway, in that. When you put yourself in the up. I'm going to say third, fourth. I think I'd, I think I'd, I'd definitely be top five. Dylan, Dylan Vassello will be first. Now, second. And then it'll be, I think it'd be me or Charlie, the third or fourth. I'm, I'm, that's what I'm going to go for. So you denying FIFA, denying all anything FIFA said, denying it, yeah, hundred percent. Don't buy it; it's false. False Pez claims. All the way. Pez all the way. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> oh. play, play with the Liverpool Reds, the Manchester Blues. You know, all, oh. everything you need. Exactly. Can't beat a bit of fake on it. <laughs> well, mate, uh, thank you very much for joining me today. It's been a pleasure. No problems. Take it easy, pal.